Hello and God bless. Thank you for joining in on my live broadcast. God bless everybody who just joined in. I hope everybody is doing okay. Nice to have you on board. Hey Phil Horeira, God bless you. GP Islam Safari, Peter the Wall, Budi Dharma, Vesperanzo, the lovely Manta, Peter, Joe P. How is everybody guys? Can you hear my voice? Hope my voice is good. Daniel Weya, VK, the lovely Manta Ray 2. Aaron Staley, Rustaley, The End, Marcus Tembeck, Jason Palmer, Mojo Dude, Malaysian Prophet Anton. I, I forgot to mention anyone's name. God bless you. God bless your families. Nice to have you in the live chat. And I also want to bless and ask God to bless people who don't participate in the chat but came to only listen. I mean, that's okay too, of course, right, guys? <laughs> guys, before we start today's live show, I want to ask you to pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior. I know it became a habit, but it's always good to pray, to be guided. In the name of our Lord and Savior, pray with me. Dear Lord, please give me the courage to overcome lies and deception. Help me not to lean in my own understanding, Lord, but in everything acknowledge you so that you can direct my words, thoughts and actions. Lord, give us a measure of your th strength so that we might not give in to discouragement, deception and doubt. Please, Lord, help us honor you in all our ways. Lord, thank you that when I'm weak, you are strong. Thank you for your grace, Lord. And because of the ultimate sacrifice of your beloved Son, we are saved. Lord, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Please loosen my tongue today so I can speak without any error, but with truth, wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Like I said, thank you for joining in, guys. God bless you. God bless your families. Nice to have you here. Thank you for your support. On this live broadcast today, we'll have the opportunity today to investigate yet again the lies of the Muslim apologists. And we're going to refute them one by one. Last but not least, when I finish my teaching, we will have a nice Q&A session, like always, with our guests in the live chat. In other words, you can ask me questions about today's teaching and I will try to answer as far as I can. So if you have any questions, please write them down and please ask me your questions in the chat. We will go through a couple of questions and we will try to answer your questions. So there is no need to ask me a question during the teaching or during the refutation of the Muslim warriors, as they call themselves, because I cannot teach and answer questions in the chat, right guys? Hopefully we'll have also an, a Muslim Ustaz or a Sheikh or an Imam, right? Who will call us live or maybe a Muslim who thinks he has the knowledge and the courage to debate me here live on Skype. My Skype ID is the Rob Christian. Again, my Skype ID is the Rob Christian without any separation. Let us start, guys. God bless you. Uh, by saying the following. Tonight, we are going to witness the most anticipated match in the history of professional wrestling for the heavyweight championship of the world. Are you ready? Wrestling fans, are you ready? For the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world, from the capital city of the United States of America, Washington, D.C. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble!
Are you ready? <laughs> People, I said, are you ready? <laughs> God bless you guys. Let us start. As you know, last live show, on our last live show, we had a debate with this Abdul here that you see here, who calls himself the Muslim warrior. The Muslim warrior. He called us finally. He finally called us on the live show and he really got spanked pretty hard. Right, guys? He really made my job much easier during the debate. And only thing he could do is, while we we're talking about Sahih al-Bukhari hadith, uh, because he knew he got busted and he spanked his prophet by showing us the contradiction of Muhammad. Muhammad in one hadith saying, uh, it's okay, let the Muslim who left Islam, let him go, you know, don't kill him. And in other hadith, he says, Everyone who leaves his Islamic religion, that means anyone, any Muslim who leaves Islam, kill him, right? And till today, till today, Muslims, especially in the Arabic world or under an Sharia rule, Sharia, the, the law of Allah, right? Implemented in a country, if you leave Islam, they will give you three days. If you don't repent, they will kill you, right? So they will give you a chance to repent and become a Muslim again. But you will be killed after three days if you don't repent. So he was showing us, actually, that Muhammad wanted to have a cake and eat it too. One, one day he says this, but in the last years in his life, you know, when Muhammad got poisoned, in the last years he, sa he clearly said, Whoever leaves his religion, his Islamic religion, kill him. And we showed you also from different Islamic websites and sources from Shiyukh who say, if you leave Islam, you have to die, right? So, you know, contradiction from the Prophet of Islam on top of contradiction. And these Muslim heroes, you know, they are having um, a lot of difficulties to, to defend this bankrupt religion. Islam is nothing but a man-made bankrupt religion and these advocates of Satan who is actually Allah in disguise they are trying desperately desperately to save this dead cult right yeah so many exactly Abdul Haliga God bless you my friend thank you for joining in so many layers of lies Exactly. Layers of lies on top of layers of lies. That's, that's really, really a good comment, uh, Abdul Haligan. You're a really smart dude, my friend. God bless you. So it's nothing but lies on top of lies. Lies on top of lies. Right? And this guy was giving himself hearts in the comments. He always give himself a heart. I don't know. This guy, you know, he's so proud about himself. Right? Salam al-Masih, Salam al-Masih Peace of Christ to you. So guys, after we done and we finished yesterday, uh, no, last live show, was it yesterday? It was the day before, right? The day before, the day before yesterday. After we were done and we closed the live show, this guy, he made, he uploaded a video basically because he was recording too. And he was trying to show everybody, you know, Rob Christian is running from the Bible. No, the, the thing is, we were talking about a hadith. We were talking about a Sahih Bukhari hadith. Because you, Muslim warrior, you got spanked, you wanted to change the topic, right? That's always, you will always notice, guys, whenever you corner a Muslim about an Islamic topic, they, because they are cornered, they, they feel the heat. They have to go and change topic and attack the Bible. I wanted to talk about the Bible, right? I gave him three chances, right? Finish the topic. Let us finish the topic and we will go to the Bible. But this guy didn't want to do that. He wanted to change topic and, you know, I'm not going to entertain you on my own live show. I'm not going to, to give you uh, what you want. Let us first deal with one topic. We cannot talk about three topics, right, guys? So let us deal with the topic, then we will go to the Bible. We are not afraid. Our Bible speaks for itself, right guys? To show you guys that we are not running from 
biblical topics, right? I really wanted to talk with him about it, right? But this guy didn't want to give me a chance. He wanted to change topic immediately. And that's not how the baiting works, Mr. Muslim warrior. Take it easy. Hold your horses. We're not afraid to talk about the Bible, right guys? So let us talk about the Bible before we actually go and talk about uh, this guy today who is always attacking the apostate prophet together with his other boyfriends, right? And we already spanked these people. This Farid guy, he's another boyfriend of Ali Dawa and Mimi Hijab. These are the people who made that six hour long video, right guys? These are the people, right? So, you know, we will go through some videos from Amin and Farid again, but let us finish this Abdul first, right? Let us finish this Abdul first, and then we will go and show you that these people are bankrupt. They are so spiritually dead, guys, when they talk about the Bible without any clue, without any idea, right, guys? So, let me play the video. And let me put on also my headset to listen with you to what this guy has to say. And we are going to refute him, right? Because we are going to show everybody that we are not running from biblical topics. Let us start. Guys, I hope you have your paper and pens ready to take some notes, right? When Muslims love to talk about the Bible, you need to understand and learn how to refute them. So I hope you're going to take notes when they talk about the Bible. All right, let us start. So as you guys just saw, this rock Christian twisted words and he lost and he kept hanging up on me and he's saying I'm not running. Abdul, Abdul, I did not kept hanging on you. I kept hanging on you only and only because you wanted to change topic. I wanted to talk about the Bible. I'm not, I'm not afraid to talk about the Bible. I just did not allow you to change topic while we are not already finished with the first topic yet. Right? That's why I kept hanging on you. Because you're a coward and you, f you are feeling the heat, so you want to go to the Bible immediately. That's not how it works. Let us finish one topic, then we will go back to the Bible. No problem. And that's what we are doing right now. I'm away from you. Well, you feel the lie, you're running away from me. Don't Abdul, we don't Ibn, run from Ibn, you. Ibn Muta. Ibn Muta. Guys, do Christians practice Muta for, so that he can call us Muta? No, you donkey. <laughs> you're the one who's practicing Muta. Chapter 4, Ayah 24. Look at these bankrupt people, man. Look at these bankrupt people. He is calling me son of Muta. Have you ever seen a Christian who's practicing Muta? Or let alone Jesus teaching. To practice muta, yeah, donkey ibn donkey, <laughs> yeah, hamar ibn hamar. You see, bankrupt people, man. This is funny, right, Hafsa? You're an ex-Muslim sister who became a Christian. Look how bankrupt these people are, right, Hafsa? You see that? Nice to have you here, Hafsa. Always come back. We love you, sister. You, we are showing you how bankrupt these people are. <laughs> talking about Muta, calling me Muta, uh, son of Muta. Well, this guy is the one who is practicing Muta. Anyway, let it go, guys. Okay, let me explain this for the King James Version. Genesis chapter 22 of the Bible, verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. So, God tempted Abraham. Rock Christian is saying that tempted means to be tested. In yes. Biblical words. Yes. So God did test Abraham. Yes. God did okay. test Abraham. But here it says in James chapter 1 verse 13, when tempted, no one should say God is tempting me. So okay. No one should say God is tempting Continue, me. continue. For God cannot be tempted by evil. God cannot be tested by evil. While Jesus was tested by the devil, he was taken up to be tempted by the devil to be tested by the devil. Exactly. And he okay. failed. The devil Nor failed. Does he Thank tempt you. Anyone. So God does not test anyone. Is that according to you? While here it says that God did tempt Abraham, mean God did tempt. Guys, did you catch it? What he's trying to say? He's trying to show you the, the so called contradiction. 
Abdul, there's nothing called contradiction here. Why? Yes, you mentioned that God did tempt Abraham. That's correct. All right, guys? According to <clears throat> Genesis 22, verses first one, it says that God is did tempt Abraham. Now, that means God is testing, right? God is testing Abraham. This is why he told him to come with Isaac and you have to offer him, right? You have to offer to a sacrifice, right? You have to sacrifice Isaac according to the Bible. So God tested, and we tried to explain to you guys last time that tempting in biblical meaning can also mean test, right? And we are going to prove, prove it to you, right? And there's no contradiction. Let me go back. He's mentioning James, James 1, 13. Let me go through these verses, guys, and show you that this guy has is actually bankrupt and he has no clue about his own Islamic sources, but he thinks that he can teach us about the Bible, right? You, my friend, you're bankrupt. You are a follower of Satan, who is in disguise Allah himself, and you are a follower of the fake prophet, right? Who is the prophet of Satan, and we're going to prove that also so because you're bankrupt, you think that you have any clue about the Bible. But you are nothing but a spiritually dead person. In Arabic, that means Ummi. Muhammad was called Ummi in the Quran because he was spiritually dead. We are Christians and Jews. We are called the people of the book because we are not Ummi Yun. We are not spiritually dead. We have the book of God. Right, guys? Ummi Yun, hence Ummi, spiritually dead. Muhammad could write and read very well, guys, right? Muhammad could write and read very well. But because he was spiritually dead, this is why he was called Ummi, right? So he was illiterate, not in a sense because he cannot write and read. He was illiterate because he was spiritually dead. He had not, he was not given the book of God yet, like the Jews and the Christians. Hence why we are called people of the book. So, guys, let me show you the spiritually dead Abdul, let me expose him and refute him. And we are not afraid to talk about biblical verses, as you see, guys. Right? <laughs> Who do you think you are, my friend? Guys, before we go there, I want to show you, step by step, who the real God of the Bible is. His nature, right? We have to explain the nature of God before we are going to expose this Abdul, right? As you see here in Psalm 34, 8, it says from the King James Version, from verse 8, O taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. So according to this verse, guys, pay attention, please. Take notes. Take out your pen and paper and start writing. So the nature of God, guys, his nature is good because God is good. The Lord is good. Do you see it? The Lord is good. So if the Lord is good, that means he cannot be evil because that will go against his nature. You cannot be good and evil at the same time. That's not possible. God forbid. It's blasphemy to call God evil, right? It's blasphemy, right? So the God, God is good. That's his nature. So when he's good, he cannot be evil, right? That means also he will not tempt you with evil. Did you catch it? Because God is good, because his nature is good, that means he, the Lord, cannot tempt you with evil, right? Did you catch it? That makes sense, right, guys? Because it will go against his nature, because his nature is good. Right? Let me continue, guys. And if we go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 from the King James Version, it says, read with me, guys. Verse 7, Beloved, let us love one another. So, this is the teaching of the Bible. Right? Love. For love is of God. And everyone that love is born of God and knows God. So, if you call yourself a Christian, Right? If you call yourself a Christian and you call yourself the worshiper of the God of the Holy Bible, you must believe 
that love comes from God, right? So we, we just taught you that the nature of God is good and the nature of God is love, right? He is love, He is good, perfect love, perfect good, right? We are not good, guys, because we are sinners. Only God is good, right, guys? Thank you for the donation. God bless you. God bless your families. We appreciate it. Thank you for your support. So, <clears throat> so if you want to be with God, if you want to be united with God, if you want to be the worshiper of the true God of the Holy Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you must love too, because love comes from God. Love is God. God is love, right? So if you, if you want to know God, you have to learn to start love, not to hate like the Muslims. Because Muslims are bankrupt. They are followers of Satan, also known as Allah and his self-proclaimed prophet, the fake prophet of Islam. Because they don't know love, they hate Jews and Christians. They even hate one another. Shia hate Sunni, Sunni hate Shia, they curse each other left and right. Shia call uh, Bakris, uh, Sunni Bakris, and Sunnis call Shia fake Muslims. You know, they even don't have love between one another, they have only hate. Even when they pray, guys, when they pray and they recite Al-Fatiha chapter number one, they even ask Allah to be not cursed like the Jews and the Christians. So they repeat the curses of Allah. So because Allah hates his creation, that means Allah is not the real God of the Holy Bible because God of the Holy Bible does not hate. He lo his love it is against his nature. That's a good topic, right guys? This is good, right? And you, you see guys, we are not afraid to refute Muslims when they bring up biblical topics, biblical verses. So, now that we understood that God of the Holy Bible, His nature is love, plus He's good, right? That's His nature. That means He cannot tempt anyone with evil, right? So, let us go back to the refutation. So, God of the Holy Bible can not tempt anyone with evil because evil goes against His nature. Love and evil cannot go hand in hand, right guys? You see? So, when this Abdul was quoting that uh, God is tempting Abraham, he does not tempt him as in tempting him with evil because that goes against the nature of God, because God is good, God is love. So God is testing Abraham, right? This life here on earth is a big test for us, right guys? So God is testing Abraham. So if we continue, guys, from a different verse, we can see from the first John 4, 8, from the King James Version, we can read, He that love, not know not God, for God is love. So if you don't know how to love, you don't know God. So to know God, you have to learn how to love others, even learn how to love your enemies. Right? Jesus commanded us to love our enemies. When we refute these so-called Muslim heroes, like this guy, that does not mean we hate them. We are refuting them to show them that these people are bankrupt. They follow a bankrupt man-made religion. In this case, Islam, right? These people are bankrupt because they don't know the love of the real living God of the Holy Bible. So please, Muslims, if you want to learn true love, please come back home. Leave Islam, who is only teaching you hate. Right, guys? And this is why these people are spiritually dead. They don't know love. They don't know the true God. Hence, this is why they don't have love in their hearts for anyone. Not even for themselves. Right? Even according to Islam, you're allowed to lie to your wife and your wife is allowed to lie to you. What love is that? Where's the love? What is left if you are allowed to lie to your wife? Is that love? No. Because these people are bankrupt, because they are following 
Satan who is bankrupt, they have no love in their hearts. So, guys, he was talking about Jesus being tempted by, by Satan, right? And we taught you last time that tempting can also mean testing in the biblical sense, right? So if we go to Matthew 4, 6, 7, right? Matthew 4, 6, 7 from the King James Version, we can read the following. It said unto him, so the devil is speaking here. If thou be the son of God, so he's talking to Jesus. So he's trying to tempt Jesus, test Jesus. Cast th thyself down, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge concerning thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. So according to the devil, he's trying to test Jesus. He says, you know, jump from the high place and the angels will catch you, right? Lest any thou dash thy foot against a stone. Then Jesus, his reply, not falling for the temptation, not falling for the test, of Satan because remember God cannot be tempted God cannot be tested because his nature is not evil he, so he's not affected by evil right guys his nature is good and when your nature is 100% good pure good we don't even know we we humans have no clue about the infinite love and infinite goodness of God right Right? We don't even understand it because God is so holy. Right? So, then Jesus, he's here. Jesus is going to call himself God. He says, he's going to uh, claim divinity here. Jesus answers to the devil. It is written again, Thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Did you see it? So Jesus is saying, don't even, even try to test me. I am your creator, Satan. I am your Lord. Thy Lord. Do you see it? So here, Jesus is saying to the Satan, Satan, watch out, my friend. I am your Lord and your creator. You cannot test me. You cannot tempt me because my nature is good. Right? So Jesus is God. So Muslims, when you call it, show us where Jesus said, I'm God. Here, here, the, the proof is in front of you. Here, Jesus is saying, I'm your creator. I'm your God. I'm your Lord. I'm your Lord, thy God. Do not tempt me. Don't even come close. You, have, you cannot do it because my nature is good. And this Abdul say, you know, they are, and he got it from Ahmad Idad. Ahmad Idad was the one who started this in the 80s, right, guys? In the 80s, he came up with this stuff. And they still repeat the nonsense of Ahmadiyya. This guy is bankrupt, man. Bankrupt people, man. If you want to talk about Jesus getting tested and, and Satan failing in testing Jesus, then why are you not reading the next verse where Jesus is claiming to be God? <laughs> to be the Lord of the devil. This is why he cannot be tempted because God is above temptation, right? So let us go now to Genesis 22 that he was reading from, right? And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, behold, here I am. So here God is testing and we taught you that tempt, tempt, tempt to tempt can in biblical sense mean also test, right? If we go to another translation, guys, this is another translation. This is not the King James Version. This is King James Version. Same verse, same chapter, right, guys? 22.1, but this is King James. This is the, NI, the ASV, the English Standard Version. To show you that God tempting Abraham means testing, we can switch translation. That's okay. No problem with that. So this is the same verse. After these, these things, God tested Abraham. Did you catch it? Do you see it? So in context, the God tempting means God is testing Abraham. Do you see it? 
testing Abraham. So he did not lie. So in biblical sense, temptation, when God is doing it, he's testing. He's not tempting by doing evil. Right, guys? Right? Muslims, stop <laughs> trying, man. You are bankrupt. You have nothing on us. You have nothing on the Bible. Right? But you can try, but you are bankrupt. So let us now go to James 1 that he was also reading fr from. James 1 verses 12 and 13. Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life. So it's about a test again. Do you see it? which God has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted. So when you are tempted by evil, guys, this is the, now here, this is talking about the evil temptation, right? When you, when you fall for the flesh, guys, the flesh is in sin. When we are in the flesh, we are still sinning. Even as a Christian, you sin every day. There is no Christian who will say, I never sinned or I'm not sinning yet, yet now. We are still in the flesh. That means we are still in the sin. But because we are saved through Jesus Christ, his ultimate sacrifice, we are saved. Right? But we can still sin. This is why we need to ask God forgiveness. When you say the prayer, right? Our Father that is in heaven. When you pray, you say, please God, forgive us uh, like we forgive others, right? So we are still asking God to be forgiven because we are still in the sinful flesh. So according to verse 13 from James 1, 13, let not no one, let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. Do you see it? Because here in this case, tempting is actually meaning evil. Because God, we taught you that God, his nature is not to tempt anyone by evil, right? Yes, he can test you, but he will not tempt you with evil because it goes against the nature of God. Because God is good, God is love, right? For God cannot be tempted with evil. Did you catch it? Abdul. God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. Do you see it? He does not tempt you with evil because evil comes not from God. Only good, only love comes from God. Did you catch how easy it is to refute this Abdul, guys? But these people are so spiritually dead. They are so spiritually dead. They have no clue what they're talking about when they go to the Bible. They go to an Islamic website, guys, I kid you not. They go to zakirnaik.com, they go to ahmadidat.com, and they see one verse and they think, hey, we have something against the Bible. But they actually, when they talk about the Bible, when they talk about the Bible, they are actually showing us their ignorance. They are showing us that they are actually bankrupt. So because God is good and it's the nature of God to be good, he cannot tempt you with evil and he himself cannot be tempted. Hence, let me go back. Hence, why did Jesus not got tempted by the devil? Because he is God. And we know Satan is the pure evil, right? Satan is pure evil and he failed to tempt Jesus and Jesus proclaimed that he is the creator and the Lord God of the Satan. So this actually proves because God himself cannot be tempted, right? For God cannot be tempted. That means Jesus is God because Jesus did not fell for the temptation of Satan himself, who is pure evil. So guys, clearly Jesus is God because he cannot be tempted with evil, right? As James 13 says, for God cannot be tempted with evil. Do you see it? 
So Muslims, you have to deal with this. You have to deal with the fact that you are actually, when you go to these verses, you are proving to us that God is good. It's against his nature to tempt anyone with the evil. And also that Jesus is God. Right? That's the conclusion because Jesus did not fall for the temptation of the evil one, of Satan, right? So the question here, guys, the question here is, and I always ask this question. This is really an important question. Write this down, guys. Take out your pen again and write this down. The $1 million question that we always ask Muslims, as Christian apologists, is evil created by Allah? The answer of the Muslim shiuch, so let me speak from Kaif Hira. Is evil, evil, evil created by Allah? Allah, 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 la, la, la. <laughs> Muslim shiuch will say yes. <laughs> they will say yes, because according to them, everything is created by Allah. So including evil is created by Allah. So by saying that, they are actually proving to us, they are proving to us that Allah must be Satan. Right? Iqra, iqra, iqra. Yeah. So they are proving to us that Allah, the moon idol, is Satan because he created evil. Bam! Did you catch it? We already explained to you, right, that God of the Bible, it's against his nature to tempt anyone with evil or let alone create evil. So because Allah creates evil according to the Muslim shiuch, to the ustaz, right? <laughs> you know this, this word, ustaz, man, it means teacher. Why are you calling yourself a teacher? Anyway, let it go. That's off topic. <laughs> When they say yes, they are actually proving to us that we will never ever should accept Allah to be our God. This is clear proof that Allah of the Quran is not the same God of the Holy Bible, right? So, let us do an if and but question. If Allah of the Quran created evil, but if Jehovah, God of the Holy Bible, did not create evil, because it goes against his nature, then... Allah must be Satan. Bam! So thank you, Mr. Muslim warrior, for proving to us that Allah is Satan. Satan and Allah, and Allah and Satan are the same person. Right, guys? Thank you. I applaud you, my friend. Thank you for going to the Bible, because now you are getting busted by the Bible himself, itself. The Holy Bible, the Holy Bible refutes these Muslim heroes, these spiritually dead people. Yeah, Islamic heaven is a nightclub, Fishbone. It's uh, the brothel of Allah. All right? I hope you took notes, guys. This is the way to refute Muslims when they love to change topic and go to the Bible because they are cornered. They cannot answer the, the questions that we ask them. They always go back to the Bible to attack the Bible because that's how Satan works. These people are Satan worshippers. They are <laughs> Allah's worshippers who is Satan. They are bankrupt. So Satan, because he gets his behind handed to him, he gets spanked by the truth they are bankrupt and they have to attack the Bible. So, you know, I wanted to talk about this with him, but he didn't even want to finish the first question yet. You see, we are not running. We are not hiding. We are here. <laughs> you are running. You are finished, Rob Christian. You are finished. And guys, so he uploaded this video of him and he's so proud about it. He's giving himself hearts, you know, under the comment section. He started to spam the last uh, live show with the comments and his boyfriends came too, you know. Because they know, these people they know, he got spanked so hard, 
I am sure after that spanking, he did not sleep well that night. He did not sleep that well that night because he knows his career is over. But because these people are so desperate, they will try to do all kind of gymnastics. Rob Christian, you're a liar, man. Right? You're a liar. You're finished. Well, oh, Mimi Hijab, he will never ever dare to call me, man. You see, guys? We don't run. I really actually wanted to talk about this, man, with him. But he didn't even give me a chance to go there. Right? I'm not going to entertain you. Let us finish one topic. And don't worry. Be happy. We will go to the Bible, man. You are my guest on my live show. At least respect yourself. Humble yourself because you are my guest. Allow me to ask you a question about Islam. When we are done, we will go to the Bible. No worry. Be happy, man. And as you see, guys, we are not running from his question. We are actually proving to everybody that Allah must be Satan because he is the creator of evil. So if we go to islamqna.info, guys, and we go to this sheikh, the supervisor, the sheikhy sheikh, Muhammad Salah al-Munajjid. This is an official Sunni Salafi website, guys. And Salafi means the orthodox version of Sunni Islam, right, guys? So they, they are actually the hardcore Muslim Sunnis. So the question here is, Evil is part of creation of Allah and not attributing it to Allah as part of proper verbal etiquette. So it's even wrong to say that evil is not created by Allah. Do you see it? <laughs> so evil is actually created by Allah, right? <laughs> and this is, if we, if we see what this sheikh is saying, Allah says in response to them, say all things good and bad, are from Allah. Did you catch it? So, evil is the creation of Allah. In disguise, Satan. Speaking from Kif, Hira, Hira. Is Allah's creation evil? The Shaykh will say, yes. <laughs> yes. Zakir Naik, are you sure? Yes. Brother Fifter, the answer is yes. Uh, guys, I'm really bad at this, man. I'm really bad at doing Zekker Nike. I know, I know. What can we do? We cannot be good with everything, man. Remember, only God is good. <laughs> Brother Fifter. Yeah. You bankrupt people, man. So if Allah created evil, then that means he's Satan. Right? You are proving to us that... You are following Satan, a.k.a. Allah. That means, final conclusion is that Muslims are actually proving to us that Allah, that they love to first inside the Bible, they are proving to us that he, they, they are followers of Satan himself. And he will never ever be the same God of the Holy Bible. Different God, different nature. Right? Are you enjoying this, guys? Are you ready? <laughs> Let me drink something, guys. What, what, wait a second. I'm still not 100% okay still, but you know, it's not holding us back to spank these Muslims, man. These so-called heroes of, of Islam. So keep us in your praise, guys, to be healthy again so we can continue, Lord willingly, we can continue doing amazing live show. And only for the truth. We are, I'm not doing this for me, guys. I'm a nobody. Guys, I'm a nobody. You don't need me. Right? But if God, guys, if God, his plan was to teach the truth, then so be it. But you don't need me. I, I'm re re replaceable, guys. Christian Prince is replaceable. But God will always have a plan to bring up teachers to teach you about the truth and to show you how easy it is to spank Satan aka Allah and his 
man made Prophet Muhammad. Right? <clears throat> we have 133 people watching. Is there a Muslim, guys? Before we continue, is there a Muslim here? Is there a Muslim here? Who wants to call me? Is there someone in the chat? Is, is there someone? Yeah, I ate my seven Ajwa dates, Frog. You know, I always make sure to eat seven Ajwa to become immune for poison, black magic. And I get the extra because I'm a people of the book. I get the extra that I also become immune for lies and taqiyya of Muslims. Is there any Abdul? Let me open up my Skype. Hopefully an Abdul will call. My Skype ID, guys, is DOAP Christian. Do you have any Muslim before we continue teaching? Is there any Ustaz? Is there any Imam? Okay. Think uh, we are for the moment, for this moment, we are out of Abduls. Right? Do we have any dislikes yet? No dislikes. Wow. I, guys, I think we really scared them away last time, man. They, we really scared them away. Guys, if you can, please share the link of today's live show with your friends on, on social media. Maybe we'll be lucky and we'll get a Muslim. Jao Karimo. Joa Karimo, can you call me? You're a Muslim, right, Joa Karimo? Can you call me on Skype and show us how, how sick I am, please? If I'm sick, maybe you can heal me. And maybe, you know, you will convince me to say the Shahada. I, I want to be healed, man. So, Joa Karimo, Karimo, Joa Karimo. Sorry if I'm butchering your name. You are claiming that I'm sick. Well, if I'm sick, call me live. We are live. We are here. You can call us on our live show. Now, my Skype ID is the Rob Christian. My Skype is open. Call me and we will have a nice discussion. And show everybody that Rob Christian is a sick dude. I'm a sick dude, man. I mean, talking ch in chat is cheap, my friends. Maybe you can heal us through Islam, man. Eh? Yeah, you know, Marcus, imagine, bro. I, I am always saying this, guys. If one Muslim, we are doing this for almost 15 years. Maybe it's already 15 years, but anyway. We're doing this for 15 years, guys. I know I didn't start doing videos like Christian Prince. I recently started doing videos because, you know, I'm not really a tech guy, right? I'm not a tech guy. So it was really hard for me to learn how uh, live streaming works and... It's not easy for an old school guy like me to do teaching and answer questions and make sure that the computer is working still and pay attention if the stream health is good. It's a lot of to take, right, guys? It's not easy. And on top of that, we have to handle Muslims who are calling us live and refute them. So it's basically, uh, <laughs> you're, you're basically a half robot, right, guys? <laughs> so... This is why I didn't start early like Christian Prince. So I had to teach myself how everything worked. And I always say this, guys. I made one mistake when it comes to debating and teaching. One mistake. My mistake was that I did not do it much earlier like Christian Prince, like Sam Shimon, like David Wood. Right? That's my mistake. Because I have debated many Muslims. I've debated many shiuch on Paul Talk panel, right? I'm a Paul Talk old school guy. So it's never late, right? It's never late. And we are here, right? It's never late to teach about the truth and preach about the truth and expose false teaching like that of the Muslim Abduls. So Jao ran away. Wow, that's sad. He came to say one thing and he left. I, Rob Christian, you're sick, man. Why am I sick, man? Well, le I'm letting you know, I'm a Christian. Maybe that's my sickness. You're, you're going to pray for me? Wow. 
Yeah, well, I need my. I mean, I mean, my friends. I am. Uh, or did this guy mean? Sorry, guys. Uh, maybe he's a Christian. Wait, wait. Sorry, this guys. Maybe this guy is a Christian. Maybe he's a Christian. If I read it like this, Rob Christian, what sickness are you suffering from? Let me know so I can pray for you specifically. So, guys, sorry, he's he's a Christian. I think. So he wants to pray for me because I'm sick. Well, I have a small ear infection. If you're a Christian, sorry for that, right? I'm, ne I'm not, uh, you know. I did not want to, uh, you know, I misunderstood you. So please forgive me. My, I have an ear infection, a small ear infection. It's almost over and it's affecting my throat. So I keep drinking a lot, guys. This is why I need you to pray for me, so to be 100% okay again. Also pray for our admins, right? <clears throat> so, sorry if I m misunderstood you, okay? Yeah, I think Jaw was Christian, okay. Hope we didn't... Uh, we didn't uh, make him... Uh, mad or angry with us but yeah sometimes through text guys we can misunderstood we misunderstand people and people get uh, angry but you know it is what it is gideon a is saying you are doing fine and have a ref at your time this is the best time islam needs to be unveiled and proven false their deception is on the increase yeah well, gideon uh, my friend god bless you my friend Thank you for your uh, prayers. The thing is, I try to um, do a, a, my live show so that the people in Asia, speci spe especially in Indonesia, because I got a, many requests from Indonesian Christians to do live show when it's not very late at their uh, time, right? So this is why I always try this. And I noticed that people like Christian Prince and others when they do live show, they do it uh, much later than I do, right? So I want also to reach the, our Asian brothers and sisters in Indonesia, right, guys? For example, Malaysia. <clears throat> right? Is, are there any questions, guys? So, Jao, Jao Karimo, I understand that you're a Christian, right, guys? Uh, you're a Christian? If you're a Christian, my friend, uh, I, you know, it, just keep me in your prayers, right? Because at this moment, we are not accepting um, phone calls from Christians because we want Muslims to call us, right? Is my audio good, guys? Is my audio good? Is my audio good, guys? Okay, so I think you have to refresh uh, Joe Bill. I think it's from your side. You have to refresh the page and make sure to put it on 720p for the best quality. So, let me continue, guys, you know. Let me continue. Let me continue the teaching. As you see, guys, <clears throat> I was watching on YouTube and saw one of uh, the videos, a very old video about when ISIS started to become uh, very strong and they took over in Iraq and Syria. They started to talk about sex slaves, you know, they were, they were sitting here like this ISIS terrorist who is fighting for the Islamic cause. He was talking about sex slaves and he reminded me of this kid actually you know they look exactly the same long hair you see this guy lives in Canada by the way he has a really unhealthy beard his beard is going all kind of directions and you know if you if you look closely you know he looks actually like these ISIS terrorists so you know I really am sad that Canada is allowing such people you know to infiltrate such a beautiful country right Right. It's sad that these people are allowed to, you know, to live in a country that 
is providing so many freedom, you know, freedom for everybody. And these people come to infiltrate these lovely country like Canada, right? Infiltrating them with hate, with Islam, the teaching of hate, right? I really pity Canada for allowing these people to live there, to be honest with you. Yeah, and that beard, you know, he is, he is a, you know, his beard, man. And they have to trim the, the mustache, right? To look like Muhammad. And long hair, right? See, they have long hair. <laughs> a lot of mercy. Real man, man. The real man must have long beards and long hair. <laughs> anyway. So let us go to this Amin guy, how, how he was, he's, by the way, guys, he's part of the Mimi Hijab team, right? And we spanked him before, together with Farid and Ali Dawa. We showed how Ali Dawa became a Christian when he said to the Christians, and I quote, we Muslims glorify Jesus more than you do, right? Ali Dawa. And we spanked this, I mean, we spanked this Farid, right? So this Amin guy, he's still making videos about the apostate prophet. And actually the apostate prophet is doing an amazing job, guys. And because they know he has a lot of subscribers, right guys? And he's really a big threat. Yes, he does not know Arabic, right? He does not know Arabic, but he's really a smart dude. He's so smart that he actually left Islam. And because he know how evil Islam is, he is now practicing against Islam. He, his motto is stay away from Islam, right guys? That's what he always says. Stay away from Islam. And he's not doing this uh, to become famous. He, you know, he really is a really nice guy, man. I really like his personality. He's, he's kind. He does not insult anyone, right? But because he has a really huge amount of subscribers that means you can reach a lot of people and because he's a huge enemy on the internet like David Wood like Christian Prince they are really feeling the heat and when you are feeling the heat you're going to do all kind of gymnastics to try to refute the enemies of Islam right guys Really, guys, um, I really have high hope for uh, Apostate Prophet to become a Christian one day, right? He's not a Christian yet, but he actually uh, loves uh, people like David Wood, like Christian Prince. He's, he never says anything wrong about Christianity. I, I did not bust him with him. Yet. If he does, I'm going to, <laughs> to refute him too. But uh, his, his, his videos are all about Islam, right? He's always making videos about Islam because he knows... That Christianity is the teaching of love. Because Jesus is love. Right? Right? So, pray, keep him in your prayers, guys. That such a nice, respectful guy will become a Christian one day. And I think he, you know, he's really has, he's an atheist, but he really has a behavior of a Christian. Right? So, keep him in your prayers. And hopefully he will stay safe and continue making a lot of nice videos to expose this evil cult. And many Muslims are leaving Islam because of people like him, right? So this is why we always try to refute their videos, videos from Amin, from Farid, to show everybody that they are desperate, they are bankrupt, right? So... Why did I <clears throat> wanted to talk about Amin and uh, Apostate Prophet? Guys, before I continue, please don't forget to subscribe. Smash that like button. Also click on the notification bell to receive notification when we go live like today. So, let me go and play the video for you. That... Amin 
made about the last uh, video. This is Ami, right, guys? He made a refutation video about the apostate prophet's last video. So let me play the video and let me put also my headset on so we can spank this desperate, bankrupt Muslim apologist. Listen with carefully, guys. Oh, thanks, Prophet, for not answering my question and talking about my death instead. And if all that is not enough, here is something even clearer. One night, Muhammad was leading the night prayer, and after he was done with the prayer, he said to his followers, Do you realize the importance of this night? Nobody present on the surface of the earth tonight would be living after the completion of 100 years from this night. According to another report, I heard Allah's messenger as saying this one month before his death. You asked me about the last hour, whereas its knowledge is with Allah. I, however, take an oath and say that none upon the earth of the created beings would survive at the end of 100 years. Guys, before I go uh, and play the video uh, further, basically what here is being said by the apostate prophet is that this is the guy talking, right? So he's actually quoting hadith, very authentic hadith, and he already quoted two hadith, where Muhammad is making a false prophecy, right? A false prophecy that is actually showing that Muhammad is a fake prophet. And he's saying basically the following that, and he's talking to the people who are listening, that in, from now, from now, in 100 years, the, the last hour will be established. So that means judgment day from now, you know, from now 200 years, it will be over. Life as we know it will stop and judgment day will happen according to Muhammad. So here he's going up a prophecy. Now, did judgment day happen? I mean, we are 14 years later, right? And judgment day did not happen. So, conclusion, this is a false prophecy, meaning Muhammad is a false prophet, <laughs> right? So, as you see, two hadith that apostate prophet mentioned are saying that Muhammad made a false prophecy, basically, because we are 1400 years later and Judgment Day did not happen. Right, guys? So let me play the video and show you how this guy is going to do all kind of gymnastics. This Amin guy is going to jump like a monkey to try <laughs> refute the apostate prophet. Let me play it, guys. This is in numerous sources. Obviously, this hadith is very problematic because he clearly says that no one will survive the century, which means the world will end within 100 years. And he said that in 632 AD, yet nothing happened. That's why Muslims argued very much about what this means. And they brought a very ridiculous explanation. That Muhammad just wanted to say, everyone who lives now will be dead within 100 years. And that's it. <laughs> that's Can you good... actually provide us with a source, Ridwan, that says that Muslims have been arguing over this very much? Or are you just going to keep pulling this stuff out of your ass? Because wow. for a person that has at least 5 IQ, or maybe, you know what, I'll, this give, guy you, is I'll, triggered give, you, I'll now. give you a head start. Six IQ. Okay, okay, continue, refute him, man. Referring refute to those him. people that are on the surface of the earth. Because one of these hadiths says that those who are tonight found on the surface on the earth will not live for a hundred years. It doesn't say that the world is going to end in a hundred years. And the other hadith also says that those who are upon the earth are not going to live for another hundred years or more than it, rather. So guys, what, what he's trying to, to explain here, his refutation is basically this. This is the hadith, guys. Can you see it? Is it good? Can you see it? So this is the hadith from Sahih Muslim, hadith number 2538. A, do you see it? Take notes, guys. Maybe, um, Phil Herrera, can you post the hadith for the people? Can you post the hadith? Hadith number... 2538a from Sahih Muslim. 
So it says, I heard Allah's messenger, Allah is praying on him, as saying this one before his death, you asked me about the last hour, the, the judgment day, right? Where it's knowledge is with Allah. I, Muhammad is saying, I, however, take an oath, right? He is swearing now, right? This is swearing, Muhammad is swearing, right? And say that not upon the earth, the created beings, and now they have to add brackets. That's not what the text says, right, guys? This part here that you see between brackets, right? Between this, let's say this, right? Between the brackets, it's not in the Arabic, right? So they have to add things in the translation using taqiyya and deception. So Muhammad is swearing and saying that everything I have ever taken out and say that none upon the earth, none upon the earth, the created beings will survive at the end of 100 years. So I'm not going to read this part because it's not in the text, right? It's not in the Arabic. So between the brackets, think it away, right? Think this away. So it says that all the created beings will not survive. They will not survive at the end of 100 years. That's actually the prophecy that Muhammad said. So the prophecy is this. In 100 years, when Muhammad is talking, every, everything will stop, right? Everything will die, basically. From the created beings. So he's... <laughs> this guy is bankrupt. And so he's trying to refute him. You see that? So think about this. It's talking about the created beings. Now this guy put in the red... Here, it says this is because the word used is nafs, i.e. it refers to human beings only and not animals. So why did he put this, guys? Why did he put this part, the animals? He's trying to show you that Muhammad is talking about the companions that are listening, that those people, right, those people, it's talking about their lives. About the hundred years of their lives, right? <laughs> but wait a second. Yeah, Abdul, son of Abdul. Guys, he's telling everybody that it's not talking about the animals. Boy, oh boy, we're going to refute that. Boy, oh boy, we're going to refute that. How? Well, here's how. Here is how. Let us go to the hadith, guys. This is all Bukhari. Book number 18, let me give you the link. Let me give you the link. <clears throat> Bookmark it and save it. Yeah, I, I, I am sick, uh, a little bit sick still, but I'm re recovering now, Joe Karima. So keep us in your prayers. I have a small ear infection and that is affecting my throat because everything is connected, right? So I have to keep drinking a lot of water. Sometimes I do really forget to drink. Because we are really passionate in what we do and I do a lot of research on top of that. We do all kinds of things besides doing live shows, right guys? So, <clears throat> according to Sahih al-Bukhari, Ibn Abbas is saying the following or reporting the following. The Prophet said, Allah is praying on him, said, He who narrates a dream, right, which he had not seen will be put to trouble to join into a knot to barely sees which he will not be able to do okay and he he who seeks to listen to the talk of the people will have molten lead poured into his ears on the day of resurrection and he who makes a picture now pay attention guys of people or other creatures with a soul such as animals and insects will be severely punished and he will be asked to infuse spirit therein which he will not be able to do. Oh. Why did I go to this hadith? Right? This Abdul here was saying, let me make it bigger. He's saying that the soul or the nafs is only talking about the human. The humans who are listening, right? It's not talking about the animals. But wait, Abdul, you cannot have a cake and eat it too. 
Here it's talking about the soul of animals and insects. Do you see it? <laughs> Do you see it, guys? Did you just notice how we busted his line? Yeah, insects and animals. So it's forbidden as a Muslim to have a picture in a house because the angels will not, will not come to your house. Angels in Islam, angels in Islam are scared of pictures of animals, right? So, but here it's talking about the soul, you see it, of animals. But Mr. Amin, this bankrupt guy, this so-called Muslim hero, is trying desperately to tell everybody that the nafs here, the nafs here is <clears throat> not talking about the animals. Boy, oh boy, we just spanked that. Because clearly, According to your prophet, animals have soul. <laughs> oh boy, you got spanked, man. So actually, Muhammad made a false prophecy. So that means he is a false prophet because he prophesied that Judgment Day will come in 100 years, right? Do you see how we can prove to the Muslims that Muhammad is a liar? He just lied. He made a fabrication. Do you see it? This is how we spank these Abduls, man. These bankrupt people, man. Bankrupt. You're bankrupt, man. You're doing all kind of desperate gymnastic acts. Arabics to... Defend your fake prophet, who is nothing but a scammer and a liar. Guys, to make it even more worse, right? Because this hadith is talking about the spirit, the soul, right, guys? Uh, let me see. Just a second, guys. So this is talking about the soul, right? A ruh. Do you see it? Do you see this word, guys? Let me put it in text for you to see. A ruh, right? The soul of animals and insects, right? If we go to another hadith, this one is talking about. This is also from Hadith Qudsi. This is Hadith Qudsi. This is according to Islam, guys. Sunni Islam, there are 40 Hadith Qudsi that are actually directly from Allah. This, so this is even much higher than basically Sahih al-Bukhari. This is actually as close as the Quran, right? This Hadith is so authentic. This is a ho holy Qudsi, holy Hadith. <laughs> so this is talking about the souls of people, right? When they go to, if I'm not mistaken, to Jannah, and they will are basically like birds, and it's talking about their souls, arwahahum, right? So let us go to Google to prove to you that it's talking about souls, right? Do you see it, arwahahum, and ruh means soul or spirit, right? So Muslims cannot say this is not talking about spirits of animals or souls of animals, right? Al-Ruh, do you see it? The soul of an animal or insect. Did you catch it, guys? Yeah, it's basically super hadith. Yeah, super hadith. Hadith Qudsi. So, we just explained to you that this is the same Ruh. Arwah. Ruh. Arwah, plural, right? Arwahahum, their souls. And the souls of the animals. So the soul, animals have souls. So this bankrupt guy, <laughs> this bankrupt guy is saying that the animals is not talk, has, have no souls basically to try to defend the lie of Muhammad, giving a false prophecy. We just spanked this Abdul really bad, right?
You got spanked, Mr. Amin. Right? We got spanked. What a shame, man. Yeah. Yeah, animals and insects have souls. We just proved it to you. But this guy is trying desperately to show everybody that Muhammad is talking about his companions. <laughs> but actually Muhammad was talking about all the created beings, including humans, right? Including jinns, including animals, as we just proved to you from other hadith, right? So they have to add stuff into the translation between brackets to lie to people who have no clue about Islam, right? So they had to do this from amongst my companions. Muhammad didn't say that. Muhammad didn't say that. But this guy is trying to prove to you that Muhammad was talking to his companions. No, 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 no. He was not talking about his companions. He was talking about all the created beings. So Muhammad gave a false prophecy saying that from now and 200 years, judgment day will come. Bam, Muhammad, you are nothing but a fake prophet. This hadith is the nail on the coffin of the fake prophet of Islam. Amin will never call me, my friend. Amin, he will never ever call me. He knows what will happen next. He knows what will happen next to him. He knows, trust me. So as we showed you guys that animals actually have a soul. And this guy is trying to tell you nefs, hence soul, is not talking about animals because animals have no soul. Well, <laughs> Muhammad himself is talking about the souls of animals, right? You are not allowed to talk, to make or paint a picture and have a picture in a house because the animals will not come to you, right? To continue the spanking, guys, I'm not done with these people, right? To continue the spanking, I am going to spank this Farid this time. Who, uh, let me see, was it this hadith? Oh, yeah. Okay, here in this hadith, guys, before I go there, this hadith is also mentioning from the mouth of Aisha in Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 5181. Speaking from Kaif Hira, Sahih, 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 al-Bukhari, Bukhari, Hadith number 5181 is talking about that Aisha bought a cushion having on it pictures of animals. When Allah's messenger saw it, he stood at the door and did not enter. So Muhammad did not enter the house. I noticed the sign of disapproval on the face of Muhammad, right? And said, Aisha saying, O Allah's Messenger, I repent to Allah and His Apostle. What sin have I committed? Is Aisha saying. Why should she repent to Muhammad, man? Is Muhammad Allah? Anyway, forget, let it go, let it go. So repenting to Allah is not enough, but you know, she had to repent to Muhammad. Allah Messenger said, What is this cushion? Muhammad is asking. What kind of cushion have you bought, man? Is he saying to Aisha? I said, Aisha says, I have bought it for you so that you may sit on it and recline on it. Then Allah's messenger said, the makers of these pictures will be punished on the day of resurrection. So if you have a picture in your house, Muslims, according to your prophet, you will be punished. Don't make pictures. Don't have pictures. Angels will not come to you and you'll be punished in the day of resurrection. So you should throw away your computers that have many pictures on them. Throw away your smartphones. Right? Muslims. You are not allowed to make videos because videos contain pictures. Why are you such hypocrite, Muslims? You'll be punished according to your prophet. So... And it will be said to them, give life to what you have created, i.e. these pictures. The Prophet added, the angels 
Do not enter a house in which there are pictures of animals. You see it? And by, by giving life, <laughs> that means you are putting soul. Because if, if a living creature is going to live, it needs a soul inside it, of it, right? So this is what is, Muhammad is talking about. The soul, arwah, as we mentioned earlier, right? Ruh, spirit or soul. Arwahahum, their souls. Do you catch it? As mentioned in the hadith that we mentioned earlier. So animals have soul according to the Prophet of Islam. Right? So let me play the video of this Abdul Farid who is also attacking the apostate Prophet. Let me play it, guys. Are you with me, guys? Is my sound still good? Is my sound still good? Look at this beard, man. All right, the sound is still good. Thank you, guys, for the confirmation. Let me play the video. I have my headset on. Let, let us do this. Mohammed once said that you shouldn't beat your wives the way you beat your slaves. This is apostate prophet speaking, right? Oh, Ridvan, you are doing such a good job a few seconds ago. In any case, the narration does not indicate the permit. Let case, me go, guys, let me go back. Slaves, and then so here the apostate prophet is saying, none of you should, be, should flog his wife, beat your wife as flogs, as, as he flogs a slave and then have sexual intercourse with her in the last part of the day. So don't beat your wives, basically. This is talking to the Muslim men. Don't beat your wives as you beat your slaves. So Muhammad is saying, you know, when you beat your wife, don't beat her too harsh like you beat your black slave. You know, Muslims used to own slaves. Muhammad used to own slaves. Black slaves. Do we have any black slave, uh, sorry, black Muslim with us? Your prophet used to own slaves. Black slaves. Right? You see it. Muhammad is saying don't beat the black slaves. Or don't beat your wife as you beat your slaves. You're allowed to beat your black slave, but don't do it to your wife as hard as you do it to your black slaves. And Muhammad owned many black slaves. He sold slaves. He owned many slaves. He traded with slaves. Right? This is what the apostate prophet is talking about. And now this Farid Abdul, this Abdul Farid is trying to mock him. Let me play the video once more. And go on to have sex with them. Oh, Ridvan, you are doing such a good job a few seconds ago. In any case, Look the at him mocking. <laughs> does not indicate the permissibility of flogging wives, nor does it include the permissibility of flogging slaves. Muhammad, just say, don't flog your slave, you filthy liar. Did you hear what he said? So he just said, Muhammad forbid of flogging slave. You liar. Muhammad is just... It's just the hadith saying it, right guys? Don't flog your wife as you flog your slaves. Why are you lying, Mr. Farid, you filthy liar? Do you have any shame? Do you think we are stupid? <laughs> this guy, man. This guy is really funny, man. <laughs> Lord of mercy, man. <laughs> let me, let me, guys, pay attention to what he's saying, please. Help me to help you pay attention to what he's saying. You beat your slaves and then go on to have sex with them. Oh, Ridvan, you are doing such a good job a few seconds ago. In any case, the narration does not indicate the permissibility of flogging wives, nor does it include the permissibility of flogging slaves. Rather, it speaks of the reality of how slaves were getting flogged. The Prophet, peace be upon him, forbade slapping. Did you hear it? The <laughs> let, me, let me go back a little. Just for you guys to take note. Take note what he's saying. This is important. Hate slapping a slave, let alone flogging one. He also had an issue with... Did you hear it? Muhammad, according to him, his prophet forbid of flogging slaves. You dirty liar. You dirty liar. Why are you lying, man? <laughs> Let us go to a Sahih Hadith, guys.
to spank this Abdul Farid. To spank this guy, right? This one, this was the Muslim who was talking. Let me take off my headset. So according to this Sahih Hadith, this is the link. Sahih Bay Al Bani Ibn Omar said, I heard the Prophet, may Allah pray on him. Allah is praying on him, say, the expiation for someone who slaps his slave or beats him more than he deserves is to set him free. Did Muhammad say, don't beat the slave? No, he said, don't beat him more than he deserves. Did you catch it? So Muhammad allowed the beating of slaves, but he did, him, did not allow to actually hurt them so much by beating that they basically become, uh, uh, how do you call that word in English? They, they cannot walk anymore, right? Or whatever. So Muhammad actually allowed the beating, but don't beat them too hard. You have to become disabled, exactly. Thank you, Marcus. You know, sometimes my English doesn't help me always. <laughs> I know. Because Arabic is my mother tongue. Sometimes I am seeking for English words. But it's okay. English is my second language. So Muhammad did not say don't beat your slaves. He said don't beat them than more than they deserve. You see what this guy is saying? He said clearly Muhammad did not allow the beating of slaves. Did you catch it? Filthy liars, man. Why are you such a scumbag liar, man? Mr. Farid? And if we go to another hadith, guys. This is a Hassan hadith, a good hadith. Sunnah Nabi Dawood, hadith number 1818. Let me give you the link. So this hadith passed. It's good hadith. Hassan means good. Right? Hassan. It's talking about Abu Bakr and Muhammad, they are somewhere and it reads the following. I don't want to read the whole hadith, but you will get the idea. The equipment and personal effects of Abu Bakr, so it's talking about the stuff of Abu Bakr and of the Messenger of Allah were placed with Abu Bakr's slave on a camel. So there was some stuff of Muhammad and Abu Bakr that was on the slave uh, of an, on a camel of a slave, right? And on the slave of Abu Bakr slave on a camel. Then Abu Bakr was sitting and waiting for his arrival. For who? For the slave to come with the camel, right? Are you paying attention, guys? Are you with me? Do you understand what is happening here? So Abu Bakr was waiting for his slave to come with the camel so they can have access to the equipment and personal effects, right? Then the slave arrived. The slave arrived, but he had no camel with him. What? The slave had not the camel with him. He forgot about the camel or he lost it basically. He asked, Abu Bakr is asking, where is your camel? So he's asking the slave, where is your camel? The slave replies, I lost it last night. So he lost the camel with the stuff. It's gone. It's gone, Mr. Abu Bakr. Then Abu Bakr said to the slave, There was only one camel. Even that you have lost. He's talking to the slave. So you lost the camel. It was only one camel, man. Why did you lose it? He then began to beat the slave. What did Muhammad say? Or according, Muhammad didn't say it, But what did this Farid say? What did he say? Muhammad did not allow the beating of slaves. You filthy liar. But Abu Bakr is, doing the, is beating the slave in front of Muhammad. And what did Muhammad do? Muhammad was smiling. Did Muhammad dare to say to Abu Bakr, Oh, oh no, don't beat him, man. Bam, busted. Oof, 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 Mr. Farid. You filthy liar, you filthy deceiver. You filthy liar, ya gazab ibn gazab. Liar, son of a liar. These people have no shame, man. 
Muhammad was actually smiling when the slave was getting beaten. Right? Did he, did he say, no, no, Abu Bakr, stop beating the slave? No. He was smiling. What did this guy say? Let me go back a little. Listen carefully, guys, what this Abdul is saying. Own flogging one. He also had an issue with the skin color of oh, slaves. Man. On him, forbade slapping a slave. We're getting flogged. The Prophet, peace be upon him, forbade slapping a slave. The Prophet, peace be upon him, forbade slapping a slave. The Prophet, peace be upon him, forbade slapping a slave. You filthy liar! <laughs> you heard him, right? It's, it's recorded, guys. You see what kind of liars? Actually, when, to have such a huge beard, guys, to have such a big beard, that means the more your beard is bigger, the more your lies are bigger. A bigger beard in Islam is lies are bigger too. Guys, I hope you took notes how these people are liars, man. Filthy liars, man. Here's the link again, guys, right? Where Abu Bakr is beating the, the, the slave and Muhammad is smiling. Man, you, you, you Muslims are actually bankrupt, man. Bankrupt people, man. Bankrupt, man. You are defending the uh, undefendable fake prophet. Yeah, and we have really beautiful words for that. Patico pathological gizab, liars. Pathological liars. You have to be a pathological liar. Sorry, guys, it's really a hard word for me. I'm not an English speaker. You have to be a pathological liar to call yourself a Muslim in 2019. Right? Pathological liar, exactly. I, I'm saying it well? Okay, good, good. Guys, if my, sometimes I make English mistakes, correct me, right? Because I'm still learning. Pathological liar, exactly. So this Farid is a pathological liar. Same goes for Amin, same goes for Ali Da'wa. Ali Da'wa, speaking from Cave Hira. And I quote, we Muslims glorify Jesus more than you do. <laughs> Muhammad did not allow beating of slaves, said Farid. And we spanked him again. And we spanked him in today again. Filthy liars, man. Do you have any shame in you? I mean, come on. Do you have any shame in you? Again, if we go to another hadith, guys, this is another Sahih hadith to make it even more worse for Farid, guys. Sunnah Nabi Dawood, Sahih hadith, Sunnah Nabi Dawood, Sahih, 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 speaking from Kif, Hira, Sahih, Sahih, this is a Sahih, Sahih hadith, hadith, hadith number 142, saying that a companion is complaining to Muhammad, right? A companion, his main name is here, the narrator, said to Muhammad, the messenger of Allah, I have a wife, so the companion of Muhammad is saying, I have a wife who has something wrong in her tongue. So she's disobedient. She is really a bad woman, according to the companion, right? So he's complaining to his prophet. He's complaining to his prophet, i.e., she is insolent. She basically she is disobedient, right? Then Muhammad said, Look at the best advice of Muhammad. Look at the advice, amazing advice of the amazing prophet of Islam. Don't divorce her. I mean, my friend, instead of saying to the man, 
try to reconcile with her, try to keep your uh, marriage healthy, he's saying immediately, divorce her. She's a bad woman. Talk, talk, talk. God bless you, Ten and Wani. Welcome. God bless. You see, instead of saying to her, to him, try, you know, to, you know, you are married, you have to work on your marriage. He said, no, immediately Muhammad is saying, then divorce her. This is the prophet of Islam, Muslims. This is the prophet of Islam. So he, then he continued, I said, the companion said, Messenger of Allah. So let's look at the companion is better than his messenger, right? The companion is better than his messenger. And Muslims say Muhammad is the best example, right? You filthy liars. Messenger of Allah, she had company with me and I have children from her. How, how are you asking me to divorce her? Muhammad now starts to think. <laughs> Muhammad now starts to finally think. This guy is married and he has children. And you are telling him to divorce her? <laughs> Guys, this must be a prophet of God, man. So, <laughs> so Muhammad now starts to think, hmm, aha, you are married, you have children. Aha, okay, okay. Then Muhammad said, <laughs> finally he comes to his senses. Then ask her to obey you. Be, be a good wife, be obedient. If there's something good in her, Muhammad is continuing, if something is good in your wife, she will do so, she will obey you, right? She will be a good wife. And do not beat your wife. Why didn't you say that from the beginning? Why did you start with divorcing, man? Are you a peacemaker? <laughs> are you a peacemaker or are you... Love... Are you loving to see people getting divorced, Mr. Prophet? <laughs> so Muhammad comes to his senses and says, Do not beat your wife as you beat your slave girl. So... It's okay to beat your wife, but don't beat her as a slave girl, man. What did Farid say? Muhammad said, and I quote, here comes the taqiyah, guys. Muhammad did not allow the flogging of slaves. End quote. You filthy liar. Muhammad allowed the beating of wives, and he also allowed the beating of slave girls. You filthy liars. Bankrupt Muslims heroes. Bankrupt, man. These people are bankrupts, man. Guys, <clears throat> I made a Twitter account. You know, Jibril forced me and started to squeeze me to make a Twitter account. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, let me give you the link. Some people still don't know that I made. Finally, I was squeezed by Jibril in Kif. Iqra, Iqra. Make a Twitter account, Rob Kishin, or else. <coughs> so Jibril squeezed me to make a Twitter account. So if you want to follow me on Twitter, there you go. That's the link. It's okay to beat your wife, but don't beat her like a slave girl, man. Says Muhammad. <laughs> What did Farid say? Let me go back. What did Farid say? Prophet peace be upon him forbade slapping a slave, let alone flogging one. He also had an issue flogging on him forbade for getting flogged. The Prophet peace be upon him forbade slapping a slave, let alone flogging one. Prophet peace be upon him forbade slap or getting flogged the prophet peace be upon him forbade slapping a slave let you dirty liar you filthy scumbag you are gazab ibn gazab ya munafiq ibn munafiq filthy bankrupt people man filthy liars man muhammad forbade flogging and beating of slaves yeah yeah right Yeah, he, he called him a hadith expert. Marcus, did I mean call this guy a hadith expert? This guy is a hadith expert. <laughs> really? Well, how come a Christian like me, a Najis Christian, they call us Najis, right? How come a Najis, Najis Christian like me, or a Christian, how is, how is it possible 
for a guy like me to spank Farid if this guy claims to be a hadith expert. You see how bankrupt these people are? Najis means uh, filthy, Hafza. Najis means filthy. And it comes from chapter 9, ayah 28. Muhammad called the mushrikun Najis. Right? Right? Yeah. So, how come that a Christian like me, that you call us Najis, we are Najis, this is why we are not allowed to enter Mecca, because we are Najis, right? How is it possible that a guy like me is spanking you about Hadith, while, you, while your boyfriends, like I mean, calling you a Hadith expert? Scam expert, yeah. This guy, this Farid, is a nice scam Hadith expert. <laughs> Filthy liars. Right? Bankrupt people, man. <clears throat> Do we have any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? Is there anyone who can defend his heroes of Islam, his Muslim apologists who are nothing but liars and deceivers. Is there anyone? No Muslim today, what's that man? Zero dislikes, that's, that's the first time guys that we have zero dislikes. It means actually if there are Muslims watching, that means they are actually agreeing with us. They are approving how these people are getting slapped around with the truth and only the truth will set you free right guys we're showing you that these people that they are liars we didn't go to uh, a christian website to prove that these people are. we are going to sunnah.com right official uh, hadith website rob christian is not going to zakarnaik.com or or uh, davidwood.com or christianprince.com or robchristian.com no no we are going to to your muslim sunnah website to prove to you that your heroes who are making a lot of videos to try to refute the apostate prophet right they are scammers man Guys, by this we can conclude our teaching of today. I hope you really enjoyed the spanking again. We showed you today that we are not afraid to go to biblical sources, to go to biblical verses, to show everybody that these people are bankrupt. They are spiritually dead and we spanked him again, right? We showed you that this guy has no clue about the Bible and we proved that Islam is actually following Satan because Allah created evil. But our God did not create evil. God of the Holy Bible created mankind and angels, right? And he gave, our Holy God gave free will to the angels. He gave free will to humans. But one angel, Satan, decided to go against God and he became evil. God did not create evil, right guys? Because God is good. It goes against his nature to create evil. God created an angel and that angel, Satan, the fallen angel, he went against his creator, Jehovah, and he became evil. God, God did not create evil. He created free will. We have the free will to believe in God or go against God when we sin, right? If I decide to go on the street and stab people to, to death, like they stabbed Rashad Khalifa in America, right? Remember Rashad Khalifa, who created his own doctrine? And we know that Ultimate Shirk is one of his followers, right? Anyway, so if I go on the street and I stab people to death, that means I'm going against the good nature of God. Our God 
in the Holy Bible said, commands us to love our enemies. All right. Love your enemy. Love. That's, that's the nature of God. Love. Good. Right? God does not like evil. You know, because God has to be reunited with him, to be reunited with him, when we chose to go against God, right? We chose that. Not God. We chose that to go against him. But because God cannot look upon sin, he needed to send his unique son, his son, right? Who is unique from him. He sent him to die for us so we can be saved. We cannot save ourselves because we are in the sin. We are in the flesh. We needed a divine being to save us and who is better than Jesus Christ to save us because he is divine and he claimed as we showed you to be divine when Satan was trying to test him to tempt him because Satan is the tempter right he is called the tempter remember let me go to Matthew 4 and start from verse 1 as you see here Satan is called the tempter do you see it he is the tempter, right? The tempter using evil to tempt people. But because Jesus is God, he cannot be tempted. And Jesus says to the Satan, Do shall not tempt me. I am your Lord. I am your creator. I'm your God. Right? Muslims always say, Show us where Jesus said I'm God. Well, here you go. <laughs> Matthew. 4 verse 7 here Jesus is claiming to be God don't even try to tempt me Satan I am your Lord and Creator I'm your God right I hope this Muslim warrior will watch our t today's video right this guy here I hope he will watch and we'll see how I actually refuted his video that he created about me. And I really have hope for him. I actually love this guy. And I really have hope for him, for everybody who is in Islam, in this man-made cult. You are victims, Mr. Muslim warrior. I really hope for you that one day your eyes will be opened and you will turn to Jesus Christ. Drop Muhammad, man. Muhammad cannot save you. Muhammad could not even save his parents. Muhammad prayed to Allah. He asked Allah to forgive his mother, Amina, right? Allah could not do it. So what can Muhammad do for you? Nothing. But Jesus can. Jesus forgave sin. And he said to the devil, as we showed you, that he is his creator. He is the creator of Satan. Who was an angel who went against God. But he's... God, as we showed you, God does not create evil. God of the Holy Bible did not create evil. But Allah, according to Islam, that did create evil. Then the conclusion is Allah must be Satan if Allah can create evil. So clearly evil is one of the natures of Allah because he is the one creating evil. No one else. Guys, we don't hate these people, man. Really, I, I have nothing against these people. But I will be there when they lie. As humans, I have no, nothing against them. I love them. Even if they consider themselves to be my enemy, I still love them. Because I am commanded by my Lord, my Creator, to love my enemies. If they consider to be my enemies. But I will spank them publicly for their lies even if you're a christian and i catch you with a lie i will spank you because only the truth matter and only the truth will prevail we don't need to hate muslims they are hating us they are hating the jews because they have no love in their hearts right they have no love in their hearts and we showed you the one who does not love 
he does not know God. He that loved not knoweth not God, for God is love. What's more beautiful than the teaching of Christ? What is more better? What is better than love? Nothing. How can you not love Jesus, man? Please come back home, Muslims. Denounce Muhammad. Drop him. Stay away from Islam. Please come back home to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because every knee will bow and proclaim that Jesus is Lord. Right? Turn away from Islam. Stay away from Islam. If our sister, dear sister Hafza Idasi, could leave Islam while her dad was an imam, how can you not do it? Right? We have hope for everybody, including you, Mr. Muslim Warrior, including you, Mr. Amin, and including you, Mr. Farid, and Ali Dawa too. Right? Guys, please, if you like what we are doing, if you want to support us, subscribe, smash that like button and click on the notification bell if you didn't do it yet. You know how YouTube works by now, right guys? To receive notification when we go live. God bless your families. God bless you. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being here. Islam is false. Stay away from Islam, guys. Please come back home to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Guys, let us wrap this up. Thank you for joining us today. Nice to have you. It's always a blessing to have you here, guys. Thank you for your lovely support. Thank you, admins. Thank you, Lord, that you can still open people's eyes like this dear sister that we have here, this ex-Muslim sister who became a Christian, Hafza Idasi. God bless her. God bless her family. Her family still are still Muslims, but hopefully one day they will denounce Islam too. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your donation. God bless you. God bless your families. Lord willing, we will see each other again in an amazing live show like today. God bless you. Thank you for your support. Jesus is Lord. And Islam is false. Thank you. See you soon, Lord willingly, again. God bless.